Before diving into the details related to Azure Cloud Service offerings, it's important to understand the Azure specific cloud infrastructure. Let's start with the benefits. One of the great things about cloud computing with Azure is scalability that we otherwise wouldn't easily be able to make possible on-premises because if we need to scale up in terms of having multiple virtual machines with more power, we need to look at the underlying physical host and it too would need to have the power to accommodate that. And on-premises, that would mean that we would have to make that capital investment, order the equipment, wait for it to arrive, configure it, maintain it, patch it, and so on. The great thing about cloud computing with Azure is that that's handled by Microsoft. So scalability also means that we can scale down when needed. Reliability comes in the form that we've got multiple regions which can handle replication between data centers in the region, depending on the specific type of replication configuration that you choose. There's also the service level agreement or the SLA, which stipulates guaranteed things like the uptime and the response time for certain applications that might run in the Azure cloud. Elasticity comes in whereby we can quickly provision and deprovision cloud resources within Azure as needed. Azure regions are spread all over the world, and as time goes by, Microsoft adds support or a point of presence or a data center within a new region around the globe. So this is ever-changing. Data centers consist of both fault domains and update domains. So, for example, a physical rack of equipment within an Azure data center is a fault domain, but we'll go into that a little bit more later. Azure cloud regions are changing all the time. For instance, currently, we've got regions in Canada East, Canada Central, East US, East US 2, West US, West US 2, and then throughout Europe, China, Germany, Japan, Korea, and so on. We have to keep in mind that some of the Azure Cloud services are available in some regions, but yet not in others, and this changes over time. So, for example, specific virtual machine series or sizing options might be available in one region, but yet not available elsewhere. Other components like the Azure Container Service or Content Delivery Network, Express Route, dedicated connections to the Azure Cloud, and features like Azure DNS, these are all items, and this is not an exhaustive list, that may not be available in every region. So to bring that point home, here I've gone to the azure.microsoft.com website where I'm viewing product availability by region. And if we take a look at the leftmost column, here it's got a products column where currently we're looking at the compute category of offerings for virtual machine sizes. So for example, if we look at the A8 through to A11 compute intensive virtual machine sizing, we can see that it's available in the East US region, but unavailable in East US 2 and Central US. Now, as we scroll down through this listing, we're going to see that there's more than just virtual machine series where the availability will vary from one region to the next. So, for instance, if we go all the way down, let's say down to the Azure Container Registry, once again, we can see that that's available in the East U.S. region, but unavailable in North Central U.S., Central U.S., East U.S. too. Now, because this is always changing, when you are planning to deploy resources in the Azure Cloud, you need to make sure that you keep in mind to check which regions those services are available in, because it may have an impact on how you deploy those services. You can think of an Azure data center as a very, very large server room where we've got racks upon racks of equipment that can house physically thousands upon thousands of servers, not to mention things like routers, network switches, and other types of components. So the fabric controller, or the FC, is a component that runs on the physical host. And the idea is that it is responsible for managing resource access. So when a tenant decides that they want to spin up a few new virtual machines, those virtual machines will need one or more CPU cores. Again, that kind of thing depends on the VM sizing that is selected. And any unallocated resources, whether it's memory, storage, or in this case, CPUs, let's say, are available to be allocated when we have other tenants in the cloud that decide that they want to deploy virtual machines. 
So we've got these racks that have all of this equipment, including servers, switches, PDUs, power distribution units. Remember that each of those are actually a fault domain. A rack of equipment is a fault domain. And when you start configuring high availability, like virtual machine availability sets, for instance, Azure and the Fabric Controller are working under the scenes to make sure that we don't have everything within a single rack. So if we take a look at this picture, we can see that we've got a fault domain, which really exists for the purposes of resiliency. It consists of a rack of equipment that has a, its own power source and a network switch, if not more than one. So we can see here in fault domain one that we've got role A, so that would be, for example, let's say a web application of some kind, instance one. Yet in fault domain two to the right, we see role A again. It's listed here as being instance two of role A. And then we see in fault domain three, we have role A yet again. So if we have a failure within a rack of equipment, in this particular example, we've got role A available and running in two other separate racks or fault domains. Update domains allow Microsoft to perform staggered updates of the infrastructure that makes up Azure. Now that infrastructure, of course, will consist of things like physical hosts that contain virtual machine guests. The idea is to minimize or completely reduce any downtime that customers might experience. So an update group then, another way to think about it, is that really it's a collection of virtual machines and physical hardware that get rebooted at the same time. Microsoft data centers are very modular. They consist of IT pre-assembled components, otherwise called IT packs, which is essentially a server room in what appears to be something very similar to a shipping container, although it's quite more sophisticated. And there can be up to 2,000 servers within an IT pack. Now, these IT packs are, again, much more sophisticated than a standard shipping container. They have detailed HVAC and power sources for the equipment contained within them. And when Microsoft builds data centers, multiple IT packs get shipped in and placed together to create the data centers, essentially. It requires power, network connectivity, and also water. The Azure Cloud Infrastructure also offers data replication in various forms. The idea is that customers get multiple copies of their data spread out, in some cases across different data centers. Replicated services would apply to things like Azure SQL Database, Azure Storage, virtual machines, which are related to Azure Storage to store their virtual hard disks. As well, we have to consider that on-premises physical servers that we might also move over to virtual machines in Azure would be considered some kind of replication. In this video, we discussed the Azure Cloud Infrastructure.